Ever since I was five years old, when adults would ask what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would always enthusiastically respond, a writer. At university, I double majored in philosophy, with a focus on formal logic, and English, with a focus on creative writing. I won the Grenfell Poetry Prize, and began writing what would eventually become my first book, Asbestos Head. After graduating, when I applied to teach English at Thailand's Chulalongkorn University, during my job interview, they asked if teaching English was my passion and what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Being the straightforward person I am, I answered truthfully that actually my real passion was writing, that I always wanted and still planned to be a writer, but that teaching English was what I wished to do until I could make it as an author. They chuckled at my response, and later, after teaching there for seven years, I was told my blunt, honest answers during the interview were what made them choose me. I finished writing Asbestos Head shortly after moving to Thailand around 2005, but wouldn't attempt to publish it until the completion of my second book, The Atlantean Conspiracy. Asbestos Head was a philosophical fiction novella following asbestos and twelve other quirky heads in their spiritual journey through life and death. The book combined poetry, philosophy, and humor to explore topics ranging from meditation and mindfulness to consumerism and collectivism. Shortly after completing Asbestos Head was when I discovered the work of authors such as David Icke, Michael Tessarian, Bill Cooper, Jordan Maxwell, Gary Allen, John Coleman, and many others exposing a wide range of conspiracies and secret societies, groundbreaking information, the likes of which I had never heard before, covering topics from the fake moon landings and 9-11 to numerology and the New World Order. After having my mind blown wide open by a couple hundred books I read on these subjects, the resulting research tome compiled became my second book and first website, The Atlantean Conspiracy. In 2007, I sent copies of both Asbestos Head and The Atlantean Conspiracy to over 200 publishers and literary agents in an attempt to achieve my lifelong dream of becoming a published author. To my complete disappointment at the time, out of those 200-plus envelopes sent out, I only ever received one reply from one literary agent who gave me a very positive review, but even he declined to take me on board. The complexity of my writing style in Asbestos Head, and the fringe subject matter of The Atlantean Conspiracy, in his opinion, would not be viewed favorably by publishing companies. And judging by their lack of response, I would say he was right. Still determined and undeterred, however, I researched the avenue of independent publishing and found a couple online companies like Lulu doing print on demand. So in 2008, I finally succeeded in publishing Asbestos Head and the first edition of The Atlantean Conspiracy. My next project and area of interest was researching and writing a book on the exciting, emerging, paradigm-shifting nexus of ancient spiritual wisdom and modern scientific experiments. After reading over a hundred books on the subject by authors like Peter Russell, Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden, Dean Radin, Stanislav Grof, Michael Talbot, Rupert Sheldrake, Lynn McTaggart, Fritjof Capra, and many others, I combined their unique but related fields of study into a metaphysical manual called Spiritual Science. This third book, published in 2012, became instantly more popular than my previous two, but all three would pale in comparison to the coming books and subject matter I would soon start to tackle. It is a subject I had always been curious about, and finally found scores of old 19th century books long out of print on the internet archive available for the digital generation. I even hinted at this subject with the cover I chose for Asbestos Head, and when I quoted Charles Johnson, the president of Eifers, in the Atlantean Conspiracy. This nearly forgotten subject, and title of my fourth book, published in 2014, was, of course, The Flat Earth Conspiracy. The Flat Earth Conspiracy compiled quotes, cited experiments, and presented overwhelming evidence that NASA astronauts never walked on the moon. The Earth is not a wobbling ball floating in space. Dinosaurs never existed. Evolution is a lie and the Big Bang never happened. After reading 150-year-old publications by the Universal Zetetic Society 
and books by 19th century flat earthers like Samuel Robotham, Lady Blunt, Thomas Winship, David Wardlaw Scott, William Carpenter, William Edgell, John Abizade, Ebenezer Breach, Alexander Gleason, and many others, it became clear to me that this nearly forgotten subject, buried under centuries of ridicule, was actually one of the most important and relevant modern issues, and quite literally the greatest and most successful deception in human history. The Flat Earth Conspiracy quickly became my most popular book, and the first to be translated to a foreign language, where it would go on to make the best-seller list in Indonesia. Having discovered such an earth-shattering subject that the masses refused to acknowledge, and chose to remain willfully ignorant of, I continued my mission of waking the world to its true cosmology with my fifth and most popular book of all time. Two Hundred Proofs, Earth is Not a Spinning Ball, was published in 2015. Inspired by and purposely doubling William Carpenter's 1885 book, One Hundred Proofs, Earth is Not a Globe, Two Hundred Proofs, compiled in convenient bullet-point form, Two Hundred Points of Bulletproof Evidence Against the Heliocentric Spinning Globe Model, and Affirming the Geocentric Level Earth. To date, Two Hundred Proofs has been translated into 28 foreign languages, completely free by generous bilingual flat earthers all across the plain. It has been made into several video and audiobook versions, which have accumulated tens of millions of views, along with several million more downloads of the free PDFs. My next mission was to make this empowering information available to children in a form accessible and entertaining for parents to share in bedtime story format, with full-color cartoons accompanying the narration. After teaming up with fellow Flat Earth illustrator Can Ev Art, we created and published the 2018 children's book The Earth Plane, an adventure story that follows a young boy and his grandfather through a series of scientific experiments and expeditions, ending in the incredible discovery that our world is not at all what we've been taught. To date, the Earth Plane has been translated into 12 foreign languages, and available free in PDF, audio, and video book versions. The next couple of years I spent researching the history of Flat Earth, the mythology of Atlantis, and the mystery of Mount Meru, the alleged magnetic mountain ancient cultures believed existed at the North Pole. My resulting 2020 book, Flatlantis, began with a complete history of the geocentric Flat Earth cosmology and subsequent gradual adoption of the heliocentric globe earth model, then delved into ancient polar mythologies, early polar history and cartography, modern polar expeditions, and the myriad problems with claims made by Cook, Perry, Bird, Scott, Amundsen, and other explorers. Finally, in a metaphysical twist, the book ends with research into Freemasonry, Christian esotericism, the Atlantean legend, Kundalini Yoga, ancient advanced civilizations, and how they are all intimately connected to the North Pole. For my eighth and currently latest book just released in 2023, I created a concise but comprehensive reference book featuring answers for 32 of the most frequently asked Flat Earth questions, from why would they lie, to who cares what shape the Earth is. Flat Earth FAQ combines easily understandable answers with detailed drawings, maps, memes, charts, and full-color photographs as helpful visual aids. The beautiful cover was created by fellow Flat Earth artist Dino from artofdino.com, and the book itself serves as an ideal introduction to the subject for beginners, and a perfect coffee table book for established Flat Earthers looking to tackle all the typical talking points. If you'd like to help support me and my mission to awaken the entire flat world, the best place to purchase my books is direct from the publisher Lulu. They are also available on Amazon and many other online bookstores, as well as in audiobook form on audible.com. Direct links to all of these are in the books menu of ericdubay.com. I have also recently began accepting donations as well. If anyone would like to help support me that way, ericdubay.com now also features a donate menu with Patreon and PayPal links. 
to all my generous supporters over the years who have allowed for little five-year-old Eric's dream to come true, my sincerest thanks.